how should you tailor your ketogenic diet to help out with any kind of gut pain or leaky gut or irritable bowel syndrome or, or just overall better gut health? You see, it's not enough to say the ketogenic diet is good for your gut health. We have to go on a little bit deeper than that and we have to understand how to actually change things. How should we do our ketogenic diet differently if we're trying to improve symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome, if we're trying to improve a leaky gut, or if we just want to reset ourselves. You know what's funny is I used to always joke about the reason I do what I do now is because I couldn't be confined in an office because of my irritable bowel syndrome. I needed a job that would allow me the flexibility to have a good bathroom schedule because I was all over the place. And you think it's funny, but it's kind of the truth. So anyhow, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how you might change up your ketogenic diet just a little bit, along with some science to back it up in order to improve your overall just intestinal feelings and just feel better so that you can just get on with life. Hey, you're tuned into the internet's leading performance nutrition and fat loss channel, so please make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications so you never, ever, ever miss a beat. And also, down below in the description, there's a link to check out Yujito Matcha. Yujito Matcha is a 180-year-old matcha company that absolutely has it down pat when it comes to matcha. So they have single serving packets that you can use on the go, or they have tubs that you can have at home with you. They have all different kinds, ceremonial grade, whatever it is that you want because matcha is what they do. So after you watch this video, go ahead and check them out down below in the description. Now let's go ahead and let's get to some science. So I promise not to spend a whole lot of time on the science. I want to get to the point, but I also have to justify it a little bit and help make some sense of some things. You see, inside our gut, we have these epithelial cells. And what happens is these epithelial cells sometimes end up uh, having the junctions between them get spread open. So if we have a lot of inflammation going on because we're just unhealthy or we have irritable bowel disease or anything like that, these cells, the junctions between them open up and that means that larger food particles get into the bloodstream. And at first that doesn't sound bad. That sounds kind of good, right? We want particles and nutrients to get into the bloodstream, but not if they're too big. You see, if they can slip through those junctions, it triggers a lot of inflammation, not only at the junction, but it triggers inflammation throughout our body, which gives us kind of this chronic low-grade inflammation happening all the time. Now, there's lots of literature with leaky gut and all this stuff and the ketogenic diet. Okay, we know that it's good for it, but no one's ever really talking about why, and no one's ever really talking about how to further advance it in a positive way. You see, it comes down to three different things. And then, of course, the actual diet modifications. Those three things are what you're not eating on a ketogenic diet. Okay, then the other thing is the stem cell piece, which we'll talk about. And then the other piece is the inflammation piece, which we'll talk about. And all these we're going to combine into a specific kind of protocol or specific foods that you can consume to help you out with your overall mission of good gut health. So the first thing, it's what you're not eating, okay? So when you're on a ketogenic diet, you have a natural elimination of foods that would normally trigger a leaky gut and trigger some gut issues, okay? You're not consuming gluten, okay? Gluten definitely triggers what's called a uh, protein called zonulin. So it triggers this zonulin, and this protein called zonulin triggers basically inflammation within the gut. So in a long story short, it allows food particles to get into the bloodstream, and then this protein called zonulin emulates a lot of these other antibodies, so it triggers the immune system to activate. That's a long, complicated story that I'll save for another day, but the point is, simply by nature of the ketogenic diet, you're eliminating the gluten and the grains and the things that trigger a lot of the gut inflammation to begin with. Now, that being said, there are also a lot of foods on a ketogenic diet that can trigger inflammation, high amounts of dairy, things like that, which we'll talk about in a minute, okay? So it doesn't mean that just because you're doing keto, you're eliminating all the things that are gonna help out your gut. No, we need to break it down a little bit more. But we have to go to this next study, okay? This study was published in a journal, Cell, in 2019. So it was a really new study as of the recording of this video. Now, what this study took a look at was ketones and their effect on gut stem cells. This is where it's really powerful. This is where we have proof that the ketogenic diet affects how our gut works and how our stem cells are produced. So let me explain something really quick. With this study, they were able to trigger ketone production on or off. So they took a big group of mice. And in this case, yes, they're mice, but as far as ketone production goes, it is gonna be apples to apples. So they said, okay, these mice, we can turn ketone production on, and then these mice, we can turn it off. And then they can flip-flop. They can turn ketones on or off within these mice. And in doing so, they were able to find that when ketones were on, it improved 
stem cell activation, or to improve stem cell multiplication, I should say. So stem cells were able to multiply in a more optimal fashion. Really, really powerful thing. And then when ketones were off, the stem cells did not optimally multiply. So it made things a little bit more difficult. We need the gut stem cells because that's what ultimately grows our gut cells. So if we're trying to heal our gut, if we're trying to fix an issue, we need our stem cells to be able to produce. We need new stem cells. They are the birth of new cells. So this is a really amazing thing because now we're finding that the ketones themselves allow stem cells to produce. So without ketones, we're at a less than optimal gut function, which means we're not able to actually use keto to heal our gut, right? If we're not actually doing it right. So the other thing that's really fascinating is because those cells are already saturated in ketones because we're consuming fats and we're producing ketones, these cells magically start to produce their own ketones. It's really wild. So the cells in our gut, because they're surrounded by ketones, by nature of like osmosis, they create their own ketones. They start creating their own byproduct of ketones, which further saturates the cells in ketones, which further helps them. And then it actually alters gene expression and increases gene expression of specific cells to allow more gut stem cells. It's a long, complicated thing, but this journal cell study did prove that ketones do help heal our gut. So now you're wondering, well, what do I eat? How do I do things differently? And for those of you that like to just skim through videos and get to the juice of it, I guess this is where it's gonna start. But I do like to explain the science that everyone has an understanding. The main focus that you wanna be paying attention to is going to be high amounts of polyunsaturated fats and high amounts of monounsaturated fats. And you're actually gonna to wanna to reduce your saturated fat. Now, Bear in mind, this is not traditional ketogenic diet. This is a ketogenic diet to try to elicit the maximum amount of ketones in our gut. Okay, so we're talking high amounts of avocado and avocado oil. We're talking high amounts of olive oil. We're talking high amounts of ghee. Okay, so that's gonna be clarified butter. Then with any other kind of oil that you have, it has to be expeller pressed. We wanna focus for, on expeller pressed oils simply because it's going to be much cleaner. You're gonna have less of that omega-6 damage. We do wanna keep fish oil very, very, very high. And we do wanna be going for any kind of like sunflower seed butter or sunflower seeds as our choice of nuts slash seeds, right? So we wanna go easy on the almonds, go easy on the cashews. We're trying to keep inflammation down low and we're trying to go with types of fats that are going to allow us to produce ketones more. I am a big fan of saturated fat. But I do think when you're trying to heal your gut, you need to tone it down a little bit so your body can produce more ketones. There have been studies that have shown that if you have high amounts of polyunsaturated fats and high amounts of monounsaturated fats, you create ketones faster and more aggressively than you do if you're having saturated fat. That being said, saturated fat is not bad. The other thing you wanna be paying attention to is possibly limiting your fiber a little bit more because fiber can trigger some gut inflammation. Remember, it's hard on the gut. It is roughage and it does help push things through, but if you're dealing with some gut issues, more fiber isn't always the answer. In fact, more fiber a lot of times causes issues. There's a study that was published in the journal Gastroenterology that figured this out. That found that when subjects added more fiber into their diet, they actually had worse issues. And when they eliminated fiber, symptoms improved. So the point is not to get rid of fiber entirely, but if you're doing a ketogenic diet and you're trying to improve your gut, you might wanna go for a few weeks or a short stint where you just go higher protein closer to a carnivore style diet. And again, I don't do carnivore, I'm not a vegan, I'm pretty well balanced, but I will say if you're trying to heal your gut, going for a little bit of time doing a carnivore style might help simply because we are eliminating the inflammatory components of our diet pattern. Protein is not that inflammatory, especially on the gut. So protein plus olive oil, plus avocado oil, plus avocados, things like that. So you're getting a carnivore style diet, but with fats that are coming in from non-inflammatory sources. Now, why does the inflammation from our diet matter so much? Well, because the whole purpose of the ketogenic diet in its grand overarching theme is it reduces what is called the activation of the NLRP3 inflammasome. The NLRP3 inflammasome is quite literally like the general of the inflammation army. If you take down the general, you take down the army. Okay, so we really do have a powerful advantage because the ketogenic diet already reduces the NLRP3 inflammasome activation. So if we can reduce that inflammation, then the gut inflammation stops already. But what good is that doing if we're consuming a bunch of inflammatory foods, like a bunch of dairy and a bunch of just nuts that are just breaking down our gut anyway? Okay, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that forever, but I am saying that you wanna focus on these anti-inflammatory foods that allow massive ketone production at first. So what I would suggest you do is every time you feel like you're having a flare up of IBS, or every time you feel like you're having any kind of issue with your gut, or you feel like you're suffering from some leaky gut, 
go back to this protocol where you just reduce the saturated fat, increase the protein, and increase the fats that I talked about, and do this for two to four weeks. I don't recommend doing it all the time because if you do it all the time, I do honestly feel like you're gonna become a little bit nutrient deprived. This is all about healing the gut and then introducing the other foods back in, all within that ketogenic spectrum. The ketogenic diet isn't just about bacon, eggs, and cheese all the time. It's about healing your body, healing your gut, so you can get back to life, even if you don't use the ketogenic diet for life after that. Okay, so as always, please make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel, and if you have ideas for future videos, put them down in the comment section below. I'll see you soon.